All right, cool. So guys, there was, uh, been telling you for a while, I tried to whittle down however many years we've been cutting trees to 15 basic concepts or terms. So I think maybe the most important I could think of with regards to trees is photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is, it's when plants take the sun's energy, right? Energy from the sun, and they combine it with the water that's pulled up, the water and minerals that's pulled up, and they make sugars. And these sugars are sent to the rest of the plant to carry out its life. So photosynthesis, this process, is pretty cool because this is all happening in the leaf. It's the way we get a conversion of not only water and minerals, but carbon dioxide. So if you always hear about how plants make the air cleaner, it's because they take carbon dioxide as fuel, carry out photosynthesis, and one thing that plants export is oxygen. So that's why it's important. People are, don't want to see what's called like a urban forest. What that means is that there's um, hardly any trees within like a cityscape. So the reason why we have issues trying to get permits for removals is because our cities want to see that there's a good bit of foliage within our city and it's not just all clear cut. So photosynthesis, very cool. Uh, transpiration, said it a little bit earlier, that's actually the term that's used to describe the uptake of water and minerals from the roots and it travels up the tree and it travels through um, all the way up the center of the tree. We'll talk about a little bit, xylem and phloem. And it exports through the underside of the leaf. So this leaf that I just threw down. The transpiration, as it pulls up this water and minerals from the ground, it goes all the way through the tree and it exits through the bottom of this leaf. And this, um, the little tiny holes on the underside of this leaf is called stomata. So there's these microscopic holes underneath on the underside of these leaves, stomata, that release this water vapor as it gets sucked up from the, the roots. And as that water vapor is released, there's these little tiny things called guard cells. They're like gatekeepers. These guard cells open and close. So during times of drought, these guard cells will cinch tight so as we don't get as much water exiting from the tree. And during times of rain and we've got a really wet soil, the guard cells will open. And if it's hot, that's why a tree will grow more in the summer. Guard cells open up. Transpiration takes, takes place. There's massive water vapor exiting through the underside of the leaf. It's really cool um, what transpiration is. So remember, transpiration is the term that describes that uptake of water. Stomata, that's the little holes that it exits through. Now xylem, that's the, that's the transport system. So xylem is, imagine like a cross section of wood. I should get a log or something, but, but within this, within a dicot. So, so we trim palms. Palms are considered monocots. It's like a grass. They're a little different. So with re in terms of talking about shade trees or dicots, xylem is in the very center of a trunk of this hard wood. And it's almost like a bunch of straws, tiny little straws. And inside these tunnels, these straws, is where all of this water and minerals getting sucked up through, right? So the xylem is on the very inside of the wood. So you see, if we do a cross section of a big log and, and you see all the rings, that's the xylem that carries all of this water up through the center. So now we get to these leaves you just talked about. Photosynthesis is carried out. The sugar is made, right? For the energy from the sun. And the phloem, which is next, is on the very outside. So the phloem is on the outside of this wood. So like right in here, if you look at the cross section, the center is xylem and on the outside is the phloem. And again, that's where all the sugars go back down and feed the plant. It feed the roots, feed all of the leaves and stems with the sugars they need for energy. So we've got xylem, phloem, and uh, like Michael talked about, the area that is like sending out that growth on either way is called cambium. So if you want to look that up, it's pretty cool. Um, lateral buds. Lateral buds, grab my branch again. Lateral buds are, if you have a main stem here, lateral buds are all of these side buds that come off of the stem. In fact, there's going to be lateral buds throughout this little stem here. So a lot of these lateral buds remain dormant currently because right now there's no leaf for them to sprout or proliferate. There's been enough laterals that have already sprouted. And the very tips is the terminal buds, okay? So remember, the very tip of a branch is terminal growth. 
that's the area that's always dividing and getting bigger, okay? So on the tips of all of these little lateral buds, at the very end is a terminal bud. And um, if you guys can remember this, it's defined as an area of perpetually embryonic cells. It's pretty cool. It means they're always dividing. So if people ask, they say, well, is my tree still growing? If it ain't, it's dead, right? So a living tree is always growing, right? So terminal buds at the tips work with lateral buds, and here's how. They provide what's called apical dominance. This is the one thing that explains why we do all that we do with terms of pruning. All right, so apical dominance inside the tips of all of these terminal buds, hormones are produced. These hormones come down through all of these stems and they tell the lateral buds what they're gonna do. That's why if I were to take the tip of this and I cut, let's say I cut right here. If I cut right here, there's no longer a hormone being sent down from all these terminal buds to tell these lateral buds don't sprout, we don't need you. If I make that cut, now there's no longer apical dominance being exerted by this tip. And you guys know what's gonna happen. You're gonna see a sprout of all kinds of stress growth. That's because these dormant stress buds no longer have that hormone, hormone talking to them. And that's how a tree, one, puts out new growth. If we've got like a hurricane or it's been over pruned or there's like a catastrophe, or sometimes it's done in a nursery because that will generate even more foliage to get more fruit. And on an immature branch like this, it's not a big deal because you're not gonna get serious issues of decay with the side of internode. This becomes a big deal when it's done on larger shade trees. So um, if this tree here was hat racked, we'll do that in a minute when we get after crown reduction, but imagine this tree being hat racked all of this growth out here is no longer providing apical dominance for this interior. So this thing gets super thick and flushes out. So I'll draw a diagram about that a little bit later. But as we get closer towards crown reduction, that'll all make sense. Uh, let me talk about directional pruning. Directional pruning, we do it all the time. I think we did it today, guys. It's when you have a structure that you're allowed to almost um, trim the tree, not quite so balanced, because we've got either a sign, power lines, a new addition, a shed. We have some um, solid good reason why these limbs need to be pruned away and it's called directional pruning. So imagine we're at a job and the, uh, the person's getting an addition, they have a permit. There's nothing gonna hurt this tree. If this, if this tree is gonna, if this new addition is gonna be in here, we'll do some directional pruning. We can go ahead and we can prune out all of this, right? This works, like I said, same for if there's signs being installed, right? We've done a couple things here with this directional pruning. One, I had kind of drawn in here. It's cheating because I got to draw it. I drew in here, there was a competing branch, but with this limb being taken back all the way to a branch collar, we've made this tree look a little imbalanced in and of itself, but because there's a new house going here, it kind of makes sense. So that's directional pruning. Directional pruning, same thing you've seen it done if there was a power line running straight to the center of this tree, you would want to cut it to branch collars to make way for the power lines. Uh, your only other option time sometimes is remove the tree. So directional pruning is just a necessary evil to coexist with trees. Uh, structural pruning, there's a few things that are done in structural pruning. There's something called subordinating codominant limbs. Uh, that's done to avoid um, bark inclusion. So structural pruning, um, if we're gonna subordinate a codominant limb, we're gonna look at this tree and we're gonna try to train this to have a dominant central leader, okay? Um, you kind of have options. You can have two well-trained arborists. One wants to keep one side and the other wants to keep the other side. It's not as critical, it's okay to debate, but the goal is that to have a dominant central leader. Now the central leader, if it's dominant, it doesn't have to be completely straight, okay? You see them growing in nurseries that way where they come out completely straight, it doesn't look natural. It works, structurally it's fine, but it's okay once you have trees that are already est established in the landscape, more mature trees. Imagine this tree is 15 years old. Sometimes when they get to be 40 years old, it's hard to uh, eliminate bark inclusion. In fact, it's impossible. Let's imagine this tree is maybe 10, 15 years old. It's not been structurally pruned. We're gonna come in here and try to generate a dominant central leader. 
So you guys are looking at it. You might have the idea of which side you're going to pick. Um, of course, I'm cheating because I drew it. I get to do what I think makes the most sense. But in here, you see this, this leader is starting to swell. And so is this leader. And right in here, this line where they start to touch each other, that's called bark inclusion. So bark inclusion is where water can sit. If the water sits there for too long, you get decay. And the number one place that tree limbs fail in a storm is the failing of a bark included limb, right? Um, if an entire tree topples, that's a different story. But if you get a tree to fail, it's because there's a massive limb here and these limbs have been touching for too long. So how do we avoid that? Well, we want to make this guy dominant. So we're going to go up here and we're going to trim some holes. So pruning the first year, I may come out and take, take this out right here. And then I might come and take this out, right? I may even get a little more aggressive. I could, if the customer is not going to call me out too often, if I'm only coming every six months, that'll work. If they're going to call me every year, year and a half, I may get even a little more aggressive and take out this entire thing right here, right? Now, that tree looks like, you put a big hole in my tree. Maybe, but rarely do you notice, and you certainly don't notice after within a couple months. But look what we've done. We've encouraged these small lateral limbs to fill the void. Now, this here is going to start to outgrow this side here. So this becomes the dominant central leader, and this slows down the rate of swelling with this trunk on this side. So because this side does not have as many leaves to carry out the photosynthesis we talked about earlier, this is not going to grow as fast as it was versus when it was there. So now this is going to be like, bro, this is cool. The sunlight's popping in here, and this thing is eventually going to fill the void like that over time. That's the goal. And then guess what we do next year? We can come prune this out, right? And over time, the goal is to actually subordinate that limb so much that it becomes so lateral that this here is what's filling the void, okay? So again, um, rarely is that practical with very mature trees. Sometimes they're so far gone. You could do a little bit of subordination. Um, and you, you want to make a, a few strategic cuts. But what I think is even more, oh, well, let's talk about thinning real quick. Uh, thinning is when you get crossing branches or rubbing branches. If they're rubbing, same thing like the bark inclusion on, the, on this um, co-dominant limbs. Rubbing branches, as they rub each other over time, they begin to cause decay. So if you can get branches that are rubbing and they're immature, we cut them out. We actually did a sea grape earlier today. We had rubbing branches that were so mature, we had to leave them because they were actually helping to support each other so much. We would have begun to destroy the tree if we took out all rubbing branches. It would have been nice if we were there since day one. We weren't. So you can't always take out rubbing branches. Sometimes it's impractical. You'll hurt, you'll hurt the tree. All right. So with structural pruning, that's obviously going to make a tree stronger. But what I think is even more important, if I only had two options, if someone said, dude, you can only do one or two things before storm season. You can only do some structural pruning on like, pretty tall tree or you can do crown reduction well i want to do both i just told you, you can do one you know what i'll choose crown reduction here's why because crown reduction is when you do an outer canopy height and width reduction where you bring these lower you bring these terminal limbs down to lower laterals that are at least one third size of parent stem talk about that in a minute because crown reduction is a way to shrink this entire canopy okay and the way i would do it you guys probably see it already is i may take this out okay and I come over here and I'll take this out down to a branch collar. Then I come over here. I don't know. It's not looking so good. Maybe we'll take this out here. Okay. And then maybe I'm going to go, I might take this out. Right. Then I'll come over here. I can do a little bit bigger one. I'll take that out. And then it uh, looks like we'll take this out here. Okay. And then who knows? We might even get to take, I don't know, this out. And then this is kind of, we have this a lot where you'll have a section of the tree and then someone says, are you going to reduce my entire tree? Nearly every tree we do has one section we're taking out 12 feet on height because it's exposed to the sun. It's not, um, there's not another tree in its way, um, which is called phototropism where trees want to go towards the sun. And you'll have a section we're taking 12 feet. You got another side that's on the northern side of the tree. We're taking two feet, maybe nothing. And so we're trying to get the trees balanced. 
Um, so we've done that so much. I'm like, hey man, can you take out like 12 feet on that side? But I want you to go ahead and only take out um, four feet on this one side or nothing on the back side. And so that's how we talk to customers. All right, so to finish this crown reduction, maybe I can come in here and I take this out, right? And then I might get a little aggressive over here and I might take this out, right? So I've reduced the crown of the tree. Uh, usually 25% is a good guideline, 25% plus or minus. Um, and now to me, because I've taken the entire height and width down on this tree, I feel like it's much safer in a storm. It's like having, as I say, a smaller umbrella in a windy storm versus a big umbrella. What would you like to walk around with? So that's a crown reduction. Now, what we don't want to do, oh, oh, real quick, back to the structural pruning. The reason we try not to take out too many of these lower limbs, right? Sometimes we have to because a structural thing. You've got cars in here. You've got um, someone that's wanting to put in a shed. You've got different, um, maybe it's just hitting someone's face. This, this thing is so low, they can't even walk to their house, right? We will lift trees when necessary. Or if someone's trying to get more sunlight and they want to elevate the tree, and we've not violated the other law of thirds, which I'll tell you real quick in a minute. Um, we can go ahead and lift the tree. It, it's okay to take these lower limbs out. You want to try to keep as many lower limbs as possible for a couple reasons. One, lower limbs, they run through this phloem and they help develop the zone of rapid taper. The zone of rapid taper is that trunk flare you see on trees. The lower limbs are the feeders. So a tree that's been really over elevated, you'll see a, a skinnier trunk because there's not these side lateral limbs helping develop that zone of rapid taper. So we try not to take low limbs out, but that's not always reasonable. Some customers have good reason to take them out. So let's say we needed to take out this limb here. I'm with you, we gotta do it, all right? And then I'm hoping maybe we could keep this. No, they need it now because it's hitting the guy in the head. Okay, fine, we'll take this out. But what we try not to do, we try not to overlift the tree. So if you break a tree into thirds, I'm just guessing here what a third would be. Okay. The overall height of a tree. Uh, I'm sorry, if you take the overall you know, total height of a tree, the upper two thirds should be canopy, right? If this gets skyjacked up into here, right? Which we see it all the time. That's what's called overlifting. I think we just talked about why that's bad. No longer the zone of rapid taper. Also, if a storm does come, and wreaks havoc on one side, you don't have a, a lot of nice lower limbs to do uh, a restorative pruning, right? So the more you gut out the center, same when we see guys take so much out of the middle, we're like, no, don't do that. If you take too much out of the center of this tree and a storm comes and, and just breaks this whole section over here and all this stuff is gone, right? And a storm comes and just slices this whole section, it would have been nice to have those lower laterals to make clean cuts to, right? If they would have remained, it would have been awesome. We'd have said, oh, you had a storm break this? Let me just take this out all the way back down into here, right? So there's a lot of reasons why to keep this interior growth. A lot of this is uh, feeders to the rest of the tree. Now, when it's deep inside the tree and it's going in decline, take it out because it's been shaded so strong. That's how these interior limbs just die. When you see interior limbs just die, it's because they've been so shaded out, right? So we had some again this morning. We had some interior limbs completely dead. Was the tree dying? No, they were shaded for so long. They were not carrying out photosynthesis. Can you take those out, right? All right, a heading cut. A heading cut is when you top a tree, when you hat rack a tree. So a heading cut would be like, if you just cut a stub like that for this guy's new building, right? Heading cut is, is an internodal cut, a point between two buds, right? And right here, you're gonna get a proliferation of growth, so a bunch of stress growth, right? A bunch of growth. So now this growth is attached poorly to this main stem. Adventitious growth, when you cut a larger limb, I'll say, you know, over inch and a half caliper, and you leave a heading cut, even smaller, you leave a heading cut, that new stress growth has very poor attachment to the main stem and it can break easily so as this matures and gets really big we already talked about there's a poor attachment right here so some kids climbing on this and it just breaks and falls who did this so there are times when heading cuts are necessary 
We do them. Um, my uh, professor in arboriculture said it's okay sometimes. Uh, there's I won't name names, but I have about four guys that like I have a lot of respect for that have said it's okay every now and then you have to make a heading cut. Sometimes it's your only option, but when you have options, you want to make lateral cuts down to a lower collar where that new stem is at least one third the size of the parent stem. Let me see if I can, uh, oh, let me get to, um, let me see if I can talk about that with this little branch. All right, where's my little hand printers? All right, so if we look at this little branch here, this is a carrot wood. It's a garbage weed species, right? But it's gonna work for us today. All right, so if you looked at this and you wanted to subordinate the co-dominant limb to train this to have a dominant central leader, you could come in here and you could pick which one do you want to be the future. Obviously this center guy looks like our future, right? So we could come in and we could cut, maybe we cut this out, right? This branch ain't that great. And then maybe I even cut something like this, right? So now this will fill the void, right? So that for me is, uh, this tree's almost done. All this interior growth, there's no reason for it to come out unless for the reasons we already discussed. But if let's say right here, I made one of these heading cuts on the top, right? That right there is when you get all of those sprouts that sprouts real big. So if I can summarize that whole apical dominance, what was left inside this, I may have talked about this plenty already, but I just love mentioning it. What was up in here, all those hormones are gone. Now we get to why we have such a sprout and proliferation of growth. No longer the hormones saying, bro, you made a heading cut. I can't help you no more. Hormones are on the ground now. So all of them are like, yeah, jailbreak. And so all these lateral buds like, dude, sprout. For good reason, it helps the tree to survive. But when heading cuts are made and it's too severe, you'll start to see, we've seen them, trees that'll just decline or even die because the cuts have been too severe, right? All right, let's see if you could talk about this law of thirds. All right, I'm not sure if this shows well. Um, first, maybe let me describe lion tailing first. Lion tailing is when you have, all right. So imagine, imagine this limb here went like that and it looked healthy. We did a great job over the guy's new structure, okay? Lion tailing is when you say, oh, I was told not to make heading cuts, but I wanna thin this thing out. Let me make collar cuts the whole way. So here I go, a uh, collar cut. I did it right, right? Oh, another collar cut. Good job, right? Oh, another collar cut. Oh, another collar cut. Oh, I did it right to the collar. Let me do another one. Oh boy, I'm really thinning this thing out. Wind's gonna move through it, right? Uh, let me see. I probably could get, mm, yeah, one more collar cut. Yep, oh, this would be great. Look at that, so thinned out. Let me do it all over the whole tree. Well, it's called lion tailing. You didn't make a heading cut, right? You didn't make a hat rack but you lion tailed it. So you lion tailed it and you left the very tip because this looks like a lion's tail. But do you see how you still violated the laws of apical dominance? Because even though you didn't make a heading cut like we talked earlier and you get all the sprouts, you didn't do that, right? But because this entire limb is missing so many lateral limbs, there's not enough hormone being produced and you'll still get some stress, stress, stress growth and you don't have apical dominance being exerted plus this limb is so weak it's just whipping in a storm because wind has all of its leverage on the outer end so that's why you're better off doing you would have been better off doing a crown reduction for the principle of leverage because i would not have left a lion's tail i would take this down to maybe here right let me take that out. So I have a limb that's much stronger. And in a storm, which one do you think is going to do better in a storm? The one where all the weight's on the very end, it's just whipping around? Or a shorter, squattier limb that has more interior growth to feed this entire trunk and make it strong? You're literally making the tree super strong and stout, right? By doing crown reductions and by not violating 
rules of apical dominance. So I think we know heading cut, lion tailing, three cut method, pretty straightforward. Three cut method is um, what we do to avoid having branches rip. Actually, do you guys realize, hold on, I think I drew it, but imagine this tree. The, the heading cut, the hat rack, is when you pretty much go indiscriminately around the whole thing like that. That's a hat rack because it looks like a hats rack, a rack for hats, okay? That's for other people. You guys know what it is. We've never done that, by the way. Um, that's because this thing right here looks like a hats rack, and all these cuts were made at inner nodes, not at branches, all right? Three cut method is um, straightforward. We do this to avoid um, limbs ripping. Three cut method is if you have, let's say, this is kind of important, guys. Okay, let's say you're taking out a large limb. Three cut method, you don't just straight up start cutting on the top because what happens? This limb is so heavy, it's gonna rip the bark right here, okay? So the three, three cut method, we'll do a, a little undercut here. Then we'll do a top cut just in front of it, right? This limb pops off. And then we're gonna do our final collar cut. This is important. The final collar cut, when it's made, it needs to be where this, see how this has a zone of rapid taper? We need to get it at its minimum. And we need to do it perpendicular, right? So we're gonna do it perpendicular to this limb. So it's gonna be about right here, believe it or not. It's right here. What I mean perpendicular, 90 degrees, to this limb because this is the least amount of surface area that this limb needs to form callus over. So because I've made this cut perpendicular, right? You see it all the time where limbs want to, they, they begin to form callus to heal this injury because this is a place where pathogens can enter, right? It begins to form the callus. The reason why that's to be perpendicular is a little bit of a, a nub here is because this is the least amount of surface area versus doing what we see all the time, we've never done, is a flush cut. A flush cut is coming straight down because, oh, it looks so pretty, right? Let me just cut it flush right here. And then all this comes off and it's cut flush to the trunk. The reason why we don't do that, because look how much more area the callus has to form to cover that large injury, right? Um, so no flush cutting. Um, I feel like I've covered nearly everything. I just got to get right back into this law of thirds really quick. See if I can describe it. Oops. Let me find that. This law of thirds. Huge. So imagine this is one of our limbs that we're gonna do our reduction to, okay? I hope I can really explain this well. This to me is the crown jewel of everything. Let's see, the law of thirds. When we do a reduction, this limb that we're taking off, right? If we're gonna take off this limb, the one that we leave as the new lateral Let's say I cut this all the way back to here. Let's say I'm gonna do a pretty heavy reduction on this. And I cut this limb all the way back to here, right? All the way to here, look at that. Right to there, okay? I took that whole piece out. I had a good reason for doing it. We took the whole piece out, right? And I took it all the way back to here. This is what remains, right? This is our new one. Here's my new lateral. This is like the new king in town. Because I took the other guy and said, you're out of here, bro. He's gone. So now he's the boss. So he's the new terminal guy, right? This limb, the diameter of that limb, needs to be at least one-third the size of the parent stem. This guy right here, right? Because if this is not at least one-third the size of the parent stem, he can't take over. He ain't, he's not producing enough hormones to carry out apical dominance. He's not ready to be king, right? That's why we can't take this and say, oh, I could take this out. Uh, he said to cut to a collar. Let me just whack this whole thing out here. 
I made a collar cut. Isn't that great? Meanwhile, this right here, you're like, what? What did you do? I made a collar cut. What's wrong? And this right here is so thick, right? I'm like, yeah, it's a collar cut, but there's no way he's ready to take over. It's a collar cut. No, it's got to be one third the size of the parent stem, right? That's why that doesn't work. That's why sometimes we can't quite reduce as much as we want, or we're better at taking an entire limb out. Because this is the same as doing a hat rack. Might as well do a hat rack. If you're going to do a reduction so heavy, you just did the same thing as a hat rack. Just do a hat rack, um, which we don't want to do. Um, also, remember, this is tricky. Like, I, I, I've seen this trick. I've done it myself. Wait, no, I haven't. Never in my life. All right. This other trick is like this. You go, oh, don't violate the law of thirds. I know what I'm going to do. This will be great. Watch this. <laughs> I know it. I know we do. We do this. Right? We say, huh, don't violate the law of thirds. I know what I'll do. Do, 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 do. Let me come on up here and I'll take, let's see, I'm going to take this out here because this doesn't violate the law of thirds. So that's going to take over. Um, I'm good, but then let me come on over here and not violate the law of thirds and take that out. Okay. And then let me see, I can probably do another one here where I don't violate the law of thirds and I'll let this guy, this guy is at least a third of this. So let me take that out and then, uh, wait a minute. You see where I'm going with this is we've not violated the, violated the law of thirds. But now we've gone back to where we're either lion tailing, over thinning. We're violating this rule where we want to we want to keep apical dominance going on with these terminal buds to keep this thing balanced throughout. So sometimes you're like you're like chink 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 it all the way down. You didn't violate the law of thirds, but we over pruned it, right? Uh, gentlemen, I think that's about covers everything I want to talk about. You have to rewatch it. Yeah, right. I know. So I realized that it's like, oh man, I know that's too much to take in. But the point was that, the point was that you can like rewatch and pause it. It's kind of like I watched my fishing shows. I'm like, what'd that guy do again? I have to pause it and see what he, what he used. So, all right, cool. So now I can send you well, the. Thank uh, you, sir. That was awesome. Yeah. Yes, no problem. All right. Did you guys already know that stuff? <laughs> cool. Thank you.